gang. On today's show, we're going to talk about the three phases of successful marketing. I think I know what those are. I came, I saw, I conquered, right? That's right. <laughs> At least that's what uh, Attila used to say. Actually, it was uh, Caesar. One of those guys. I know. Vini, vini, vici. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah, today's show is going to be about, you know, the three phases, but we're going to give them the 14 steps. If they follow these 14 steps. So 14 plus 3 equals 17. Yeah, they'll, they'll be successful. <laughs> they'll be successful. Um, you know, I've been looking at the stats for the show. Right. We're now at a million, uh, 115,000 approximately page views for the blog, and you know the show is tied to the blog and so on. Um, and I'm just wondering, you know, by the end of the year, where would it be? It'd be pretty exciting. We yeah. might be up around 130, 140,000 page views, something like that. Um, and speaking of that, we would need to really thank. Vibrant Life Health Center for being our sponsor all year. That's right. Um, and also, I would want to mention that they have a show on, on Thursdays that you can really check out. They have right. lots of really cool stuff. Especially they have this new thing called thermography, which can be used to detect all kinds of things, including breast cancer, early. Yeah, and, and, and the show is called Life in Balance. And what I like about it is it's exactly that. They're not Even though it's run by a chiropractor, right. they're not just talking about chiropractic. Right. They're, they're talking, talking about, about all kinds of alternative medicine types of things and you know, diet and everything you, you need it. to get yourself make your make your lifestyle better and get back to health. And, and their blog is really really good. Lots of really useful stuff. Mm -hmm. They're not just trying to pitch you or anything. Right. They're giving you useful things that you can use in your everyday life. Um, for our listeners out there in the cyber world, you can call in by dialing two one three nine four three three eight zero eight. That's two one three nine four three three eight zero eight. Of course, if you call in and give us a really good question, you get to mention your company's uh, telephone number and website, which right. would be sort of a cool thing for you. Um, but, you know, so we're talking today about, you know, the three phases of marketing, and, and the, the show is all, it's called Guaranteed Marketing. Right. Because we, we as a company guarantee our marketing, which is something that a lot of companies don't do. Yeah, but one of the things that even our clients and everybody out there, okay, we, we are technicians, not magicians. Right. So the one thing, and in fact, this is the most important factor of all, it's called time. You know, you don't snap your fingers and all of a sudden, you know, the fish right. start jumping in the boat. Right. You know, you have to we're plan. Not, we're not God. Right. Exactly. And we don't own the internet or Google, you know, we just know how to feed that 800-pound right. world. And, and the reality is, you can have a great plan that works extremely well, mm -hmm. and then Google and these other guys go on there and try and mess it up. That, I mean, literally. They live for that. Right. That's not, not that they're going to maybe do that. Okay. Yeah. They, they live they do for those, that they'll stuff. They do those kinds of things yeah. regularly. But we keep tweaking our system. Mm -hmm. And we keep, we're still able to do the guarantees. And this is coming up on six years now that what we've been doing right. this. So it's a pretty cool thing. Um, when people ask us, you know, how do you do that? The reality is, we have, a, we have a very good system <laughs> yeah. that revolves around a lot of the specific things that has to be done. And it's very labor intensive. It's not like you said, you snap your fingers. There's nope. no dirty tricks. There's no black hat tricks. Nope. There's nothing that we do that's designed to make Google or Yahoo or Bing or Facebook or any of these other yep. people unhappy. And, and, and the reality is you don't even have to try and do that because those guys are already sort of unhappy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, you have to jump through a lot of hoops just to please them for just about anything. Right. So what we want to do is start out by making sure that people understand what our three phases are. Because again, if you really follow these three phases and the 14 steps, you will be successful. Right. Now. The extent of your success will be related on how much time do you really spend on the details. Because mm -hmm. if you just try and whiz through all this stuff, forget right. it. I mean, yeah. there's no such thing as least effort, most gain. Right. There's most effort, most gain. Right. Well, and, <laughs> and the thing is, too, is that, you know, most people, they just shoot from the hip. I mean, you have to right. have a plan. You have to test right. the plan. And you have to adjust the plan. Yeah. And, and most people start out with an idea like, I want more customers. Yeah, well, everybody wants that. Or I want to make more money. You know, hey, I feel like whipping out a dollar say, oh, here, you got a dollar. Yeah, you know? well, I mean, it's a whole point. If, if it was easy, everybody would be able to right. do it, right? But, I mean, the fact of the matter is two-thirds of the businesses that start up go out of business within the first two years. Yeah. And that's because they skip a lot of steps. I mean, most people will do some of these steps. Yeah. But the reality is they skip most of the steps. And one of the biggest steps, the very first step, if you missed this very first step, you've already misstepped right <laughs> because the first step is you got to have a really clear objective mm -hmm. you have to absolutely know what you want right. to get yeah you have to know the end result in minute detail if yeah. you don't know that it's really hard to get there from here well I'm just saying I want more customers that's not an objective right. that's right. not a clear objective right 
And we're talking about creating smart goals here. So a smart goal would be not, I want more customers. Right. I want to gain 20 new customers a month for the next six months might be a smart goal. Right. You know, starting on XYZ date, ending on yeah. XYZ and date. And you have to have a reasonable plan to achieve that goal. You right. can't just say, I want to get 20, because we actually had a client that we were delivering about 10 customers a month, and he's like, oh, I should be getting 40. It's like, well, your plan, obviously, what we're doing right now doesn't do that. Now we can add some other elements on there to amp it up, right. or you can just let it keep building over time and, and, and short it well, no, well, not only like that, more. their return on investment for getting 10 new customers a month was excellent. Was like about tenfold for right. what they were paying us. Right. My answer to that question was, well, I want 40. Right. I said, well, you need to increase right. your, spend. your spend by about right. fourfold. Right. Because then with 10, 10 right. times four is 40. It's working, <laughs> right. Put more money in it. Right. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. But you can't just do it with a magic right. wand. Yeah. And, and that's what people thought, expect of, of marketing. Companies. Not only that, things change. I mean, if today you're doing 10, right. but yesterday you were doing 40, something's changed between yesterday and today. Yeah. And if you're doing 10 today and you want to get to 40, you got to do whatever today requires to get to 40. Well, and you also have to factor in the media because, like, you know, when you look at media, like broadcast media and things like that, you might be going gangbusters, so you double down, and all of a sudden it drops because right. there's a limited amount of audience in right. there, and sooner or later you burn through that audience. Right. And that's one of the things that a lot of people don't understand. Most advertising has its run, if you will. Mm -hmm. So that'll be one of the phases that we talk about. So make sure that your objective it's is realistic. smart. It's right. a, it's, it has to be a smart goal. Which means specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and, and timely. timely. Yeah. And if, you don't, if your goal doesn't have all those elements in it, it's not smart. It might be smart, you know, without the R and the Smug. T. Smart. <laughs> it's got to have all of them. If it doesn't, it, it doesn't work. The second thing is, once you've got a, a goal, then you have to create a message that will take you to that goal. Right. And this is a very creative process in many cases for most people. You have to produce a message that's going to lead to a compelling offer. So that's the third step. So the second step is creating the message. Mm -hmm. And it has to be compelling. That's the third step. Right. If your message, which says, you know, we, we sell great products or we guarantee our results or we're, whatever we're it is. We're the best customer service. Right, right. It has, if, it, if it doesn't meet that goal and it doesn't have a compelling offer, then it doesn't really matter. Well, in, in the offer, I look at it, it's like a fishing expedition. Okay, people that, that are really into fishing, first of all, they realize that if the bait worms aren't working, right. you switch to them, you know, you're going to switch right. your bait. It's always the fish that decide what they right. want to eat. And so, in says we're not talking about fish, we're talking right. about customers, people out there. So they determine what is a special That's offer, right. what is a compelling offer. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our customers will come to us at first, and when we say, what's your special offer? And they'll say, well, 10% off. Right. Well, you tell me, the 10% off a special deal for the well, average person? Well, if you're person? selling a Lexus, it might be. Yeah. I mean, ten percent off a million dollar house, right. one hundred thousand right. dollars off. That might be a good deal. Right. But for a lot of things, ten percent is nothing. Mean As a matter of fact, it's only a good offer if the competition is doing less. Right. Because if the competition is giving twenty percent off, right, exactly, ten percent off is a bad deal. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, and in yeah. fact, I had a friend of mine that was actually selling uh, lemon trees online, yeah. and of course, he had to compete with the big box stores, and they offered a one year. Guarantee. So you know what he did? He offered yeah. two, two year, year guarantee, yeah. and he was doing very well. Yeah. It's so worked. again, your the fish offer like the, fish like the bait. Your offer has to be com a competitive offer against the other people, mm -hmm. and if it's a really good offer, it essentially it's a no brainer. When right. a person a great offer, when somebody looks at it, they don't have to understand it. Right. They intuitively know that this is a great offer. This is a deal that's so good that I need to take care of it now. Right. Or I'm going to lose out. That's a great offer. Yeah, and, and you don't want to make people jump through too many hoops to be able to take right. up, take you up on your offer either. Because I've seen it where, you know, click here, and you click it 12 times, and there's a form that long. It's like, right. who's going to do that? Right. You start having easy. to do, jump through a lot of hoops. Right. You, they're going to cancel out before it's done. As a matter of fact, I want to make sure that you understand, in the article, if you go to the, you know. The blog. The blog. Mm -hmm. The blog itself has, I don't know, 18 articles listed there. Several of them have to do with, you know, like understanding your ideal customer profile, creating what your a, unique selling proposition right. is, creating, creating a, a, a offer, you know, right. creating that offer and so on. Those are, those are articles. Each one of these steps mm -hmm. has essentially an article into, of it to itself. Yep. So if you need to go back and, and brush up on those things, I think that's something would be a really good idea. And, and then you got to figure out, you know, how you're going to broadcast that offer. Yeah. Because again, you know, unless you've got a million dollars to throw around, 
you have to figure out what, what right. media makes sense. Right. And that's where we, we talk about honing your message. So honing your message, how do you go out and make this message honed? Well, you're going to do a little bit of testing. You know, what I call, I like to call it the quick and dirty testing. We're right. going to go in there and do some mini tests on AdWords or Facebook or something like that. Um, but a simple thing that you can do is just ask your best customers. Mm -hmm. I mean, does this just look like a good offer to you? Right. <laughs> is it something that you'd be willing to throw down your money on? Sure. You know, and I guarantee you they're going to tell you yes or no very quickly. Right. Um, the other thing is you can ask your employees. You can ask your vendors that you work with. You could do a little Craigslist type of test if you want. Yeah, or you can come up with two different landing pages with two right. different offers and try them, see which one works. Well, I, that's actually, there's a section, section when we're going through the testing program that you're going to do that anyway. Right. But that, that goes without saying. So, for example, some of these things, the simplest thing to do A-B testing with is create two ads, mm -hmm. which is different from having two landing pages. Right. Okay, but the two ads, like in, in AdWords, you can create one ad and then copy it and make another one really right. easy sure. and just all use all the same keywords. Right. So those kinds of things can be done pretty easily. Once you've done that and you've done a little bit of testing, you should have a budget range. Right. May not maybe a not a fixed budget amount, mm -hmm. but a range. An idea that what's gonna work. You also should have an idea of how much money you really have. Because when we tell people to do this, they shouldn't be using money that they don't have. Yeah. Okay? Unless you're willing to borrow it and pay it back. You shouldn't be spending money that you don't have. In other words, one of the tricks that a lot of the advertising people says, oh, you're going to make all this money back, sign the contract for a year, and the, the sales you get will pay for the advertising. Wrong answer. Thanks yeah. for playing, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's usually a big lie. So what the best way to do is if you know that you've got XYZ dollars, that's what you want $500 to use. a month, $1,000 a month, that's right. your budget. That's what you're going to spend. Yeah, don't bust the budget. And that also may limit what venue you use. Exactly. So for example, yeah, you're not going to do TV if you've only got $500 a right. month. Right. And it might might not be AdWords because right. AdWords may it's be expensive. pricing you at ten dollars a click, whereas right. on Facebook it's two dollars a click sure. or something. So you're going to look at also your return on investment right. once you do some of your testing. Uh, once you also got that budget decision down, you're going to start doing some planning and scheduling. You need to figure out how long can you run it. Now that may be determined by partially by your budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but what if it works? How long are you going to keep running it? Well. My answer usually to that is you keep running until it stops working. Okay, you ride the horse until it dies. Right. And what you really need to do is you need to test and measure all the time. Yeah. Which is something that a lot of people don't do. They'll give the Yellow Pages guy a bunch of money and say do it. And they sign a year contract and they're never doing any kind of test and measuring. They're, mm -hmm. And even if it's a Yellow Pages online, right. they usually have to call the rep up and say, hey, Will you send me the statistics for my for my ad that's running? Right. <laughs> because they're not going to offer it up for free. Right. You know, that kind of thing. Well, and the problem usually isn't, you know, testing and measuring to, to tweak your ads that are working. The hardest part is finding the ones that will work. Right. And that's why sometimes you want to run several ads because you might run three or four ads and maybe only one of them is going to actually work. Well, that's when, when we get into phase two, yeah. phase two is all about the testing phase. Okay. okay? So we got the quick test, which we talked about right. a little bit. Here's a nice secret about quick test. Sometimes you can get free money. Mm -hmm. You can contact Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, uh, not Google, uh, Google, Google AdWords, mm -hmm. uh, and they have free money sometimes. Yeah, they'll give you a test. A hundred dollar coupon, or, or they might say spend you spend a hundred dollars right. and you get another hundred. You know, right. BOGO type of thing. So those are good things that you can do that are relatively inexpensive to do. Um, and in this phase, you really want to do A-B testing, and you want to do A-B testing at two levels. One is two different ads. Mm -hmm. The other one is two different landing pages. Right. And big companies don't do two and two, by the way. They might do five and five. Mm -hmm. So they might have five ads that they're going to test right. and five landing pages, and then they see which ones run. And they use all the same keywords, and, and the keywords are being tested too. So mm -hmm. which keywords don't work, Right. they get eliminated out of the whole process. That's, yep. Okay. Here's another thing that's a very important in the testing phase. Don't assume that Facebook or right. AdWords right. or whatever is going to be the best venue. You need yeah. to test in multiple venues True. to see what works best. Well, again, as long as you can afford those venues. Don't right. go where you can't afford to go. Well, and the other thing is, what you're going to find out real quickly is if AdWords may be telling you it's three bucks, but it's really six right. to get the kind of return you want. And you're going to go with wherever you're going to get the best spend because you want to get a good click-through rate and a 
a low cost per yeah, and, return. And, and speaking of cost per click, a lot of times people try to do it themselves thinking they're going to save some money, and that's absolutely the worst thing right. to do because all these things are very, very complicated, very, very Yeah, they're very fluid. I mean, these guys change their platforms. Well, and there's a lot of there's like layers. The weekly almost. There's layers, you know. I mean, do, do you want to broadcast to the world or do you want to broadcast to your right. town or do you want to broadcast to three zip codes in your right. town? Okay? So, if you don't know how to do that, you're just going to waste your money and then you're going to say it's not working. Right. You know, and if you're just going to send all the clicks to your homepage that has a lot going on and then and then you're not getting translation because you're not asking people to do anything, you're going to say it's not working. So sometimes you're better off hiring somebody that's to manage sort of tricky. your campaign when, when, and knows what the hell they're doing. The default settings, yeah. even if you call Google and say, hey, walk me through it and set it up, yeah. their default settings are designed to make them more money. Absolutely. And they're not designed to make you more money. Absolutely. Okay? Even when you're getting their helper person, right. it's still designed to make them more money. Well, of course, because they're, <laughs> gonna, they're, you know, they're a business. They're yeah. going to do what's best for their business. What you need is somebody that's going to do the best for your business. Right. So, and consultants will do that. So step 10 is make sure you go through mm -hmm. and reassess the budget after all this testing's done. Right. So now you've decided what ads are going to work, what landing pages are going to work, right. what keywords are going to work, and the location and what you're going to spend. So now you can fire for effect. Now you're going to run, start running the campaign. So mm -hmm. we're in the phase three. And running the campaign doesn't mean you set it and forget, forget it. it. Right. That don't work. No. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's a good way to throw away lots and lots of money. You can't set it and forget it. As a matter of fact, one of the things that we do with our clients is we meet on a regular basis, mm -hmm. like usually weekly, right. by phone or, or in person. And we'll talk about how things are going right. and what's working well and what's not working well and what else do we want to try and all those other kinds sure. of things. We really believe in active marketing, not passive marketing where this set and forget it stuff because that set and forget it mentality produces the least return on investment. Okay. And if you're hiring somebody that's going to manage your campaign and they're not communicating with you at least on a weekly basis, fire them because they're not doing it. A lot of people will do that. They just, you know, I'm going to charge X amount of money and. I want to take care of it, and all they do is they set it up and they walk away from it and go right. for the next sucker. I mean, they're not, they don't have your best interest at heart. And if somebody, if, if they really wanted to work it, they're going to communicate with you and say, okay, here's what we've got so far, Right. And here's what I recommend next. And some of these people will, will communicate with you, but they might charge you extra. In other words, they say, well, I'll only do this once a month. Well, man, that might be okay for you, but again, well, I, the I more think, often, the better. Yeah, I think once a month is too long and, and le until you've got and something. And the pay-per-click campaign, for sure, in the beginning, it's crazy. Saying. Yeah, because you're you're gonna, you're going to be making a lot of changes just right. to try to, to to find out what keywords work, what what offers work, right. and and to manage the burn, because or else you can go through a pile of money real fast. So one of the things we're saying is a step of level twelve is monitoring the campaign. There you go. So you got to really monitor what's going on. You always want if somebody's doing pay per click for you or any kind of you know, like a lot of the TV shows now when they do their ads, they right. have their own right pay per click type mm -hmm. things, if you will. You need to be able to make sure you have access to those analytics. Absolutely. You know, you need to also look at the analytics. Not just have access, you need to look at them regularly. Yeah. And regularly for me is usually once a week minimum. When I'm starting up a campaign, I'm looking at it every day, sometimes twice a day for the first couple of weeks to yeah. see what the heck's going on. And, and that's really what you want. If you hire somebody to manage your campaign, they really have to be looking at it daily. I mean, right. they might be communicating with you weekly, but they need to look at it daily. Right. They need to be in there doing And stuff. you have to give them enough authority to be able to make changes that, that they see fit. All right. So speaking of changes, step 13 is be ready to make changes at any point in time. Yeah. And what's nice about online media as opposed to other media because I mean if you're running a TV advertising right. campaign you really can't do much right. you can't change until, it a lot until you, well at least not until the next month right where with you know something like a, a pay-per-click campaign you can you can make changes on a daily basis that's right. a nice thing to do and yeah. here's here's why you'd want to do that think about this you start a campaign you get your killer offer that you're given 20% off whatever the gig is and all of a sudden three competitors come up with 25% off yeah <laughs> Now you got to reassess what the heck's going on. I mean, if you're not doing that, that's right. You know, you may be throwing money down a hole that people are clicking on you, but then they're buying from the guy who's giving 25% off. That's right. You know, or the bidding price went up. Right. Or some other thing is going on, or you're running your ad in in, in Facebook and it's not doing anything on Facebook, but but AdWords is going to town. Absolutely. You want to remove that money from AdWords over to Facebook or whatever, or vice versa. You know, you need to be a, in a football game. The coach starts with a really good game plan. If the game plan ain't working by by halftime, they got a new game plan. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it is. Well, marketing is no different. 
You want to win this game. You want to make your best return on investment. You got to be willing to go in there and make the changes when they're needed. Sometimes you got to call and play from the sidelines. If you don't, you know? if you're not willing to jump in there and do all the things that you got to do, you're going to make a big mistake. Now, the last item is, once you know that this system works, you're always going to be probably tweaking and stuff like that. But you do it again. And the next place you're going to do it again, you might pick a second item that you sell mm -hmm. or a second service that you sell and start advertising that item. And you go through the full process of testing and figuring out what the message is and mm -hmm. all those other kinds of things. And once you get that one working, you find another one. And you run every one of them until they stop working. And how do you know when they stop working? When your return on investment is not there. Yeah. If you're drawing the clicks, but you, the phone isn't ringing, people right. aren't filling out forms, they're not doing something, they're not taking that next step, right. then it's time to move on. And again, you can't do this in a void. You can't just run the campaign and, ex and then, the worst thing you could do is do it after the fact. Mm -hmm. So you run it for a, a quarter, right? and you look back and say, did we make money? Mm -hmm. Well, hell, you could have lost three months worth of money. Right. And we've had clients that have lost $60,000 in a three month period because they weren't willing to go in there and adjust it even though we told them they did. And in some cases, we told them to stop. Yeah, because, well, it's work, you know, making yeah. a change. Right. I mean, again. And the problem, too, is sometimes people, they won't fix the problem. They'll defend the problem. Well, defend and the it, problem. They've always done it this way. It was always working before. It ain't working now. I'm afraid if I stop it, the phone won't ring at all. Well, hell, if you're spending $20,000 a month and the phone's ringing three times a month, you're losing a hell of a lot of money. Unless you're you, selling Lexuses. Right. Well, <laughs> Yeah, maybe if you're selling, but even if you're selling Lexuses, your profit margin on a car is 8%. Right. So. Depends on what models they're, they're buying, okay? If they're yeah. buying the top end models, yeah, you're probably doing all right. Right. If they sell $100,000 cars, mm -hmm. you know, they're making $8,000 or whatever on each car, they just made $1,000 on the $20,000 spent. Right. Yeah. That's not a great return on That's investment. That's not a very good return on investment, okay? But at least you're not bleeding money, because most people, it's the other way around. Most right. people. They just keep shoving, just you know, shoving it into the coal fire there. You know, they figure we just keep making right. steam. This this is going to keep going, but you don't realize it's going right off the tracks. So, you know, those those are the steps. I want to make sure that I, I tell you to go and look at some of these articles because we've created a lot of really good articles that help people do this stuff. And we use this. This is our methodology. We're telling you our methodology. We're not pulling any secrets here. No. This is how we do it. Uh, the articles that I absolutely definitely tell people to look at is you want to understand your unique selling proposition, right. which is the third one I think in the list. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to get the ultimate guide to our ideal customer profile. You need to fully understand your ideal customer profile. And you've also got the one, the irresistible offer. That, like, and there's two articles in there. There's one about you know how to use it yeah. for a small business and then how to create one. Mm -hmm. And then there's a whole bunch of other ones on conventional advertising and you know 18 tips to maximize your content marketing and so on. So there's a whole bunch of really, really good articles in there that are worth reading. I know we're getting close to the end of the show. We don't want to miss the uh, Worldwide, Worldwide Weirds. Weirds. I also want to mention that this we're coming. We're in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Usually in the fourth quarter is when we release some new stuff. So we'll be releasing some new e-books uh, on a whole bunch of subjects. Mm -hmm. One will be on SEO. One will be on blogging. Right. Um, one will probably be on social media. Those will be three for sure. And we're coming out with a new book. Hopefully we'll have it out by December for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Uh, which will be about you know marketing, how to really maximize your marketing, and it'll include not just digital marketing, right. but marketing in general. So it'll be a really cool book when it comes out. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> so the world wide weirds, you know, yeah. what you got today? Well, you know, we're talking about Lexus, right? right? So you know, you most people don't realize this, but a lot of these car companies, they're into doing other th things other than selling cars. Okay. Because they got money to burn, and they got to right. figure to put it in something. Yeah. Well, here's one that I kind of liked. Because, you know, uh, GM is, is, is actually building a stealth truck for the Army. He says, imagine you're a U.S. Special Forces operator on a dangerous mission. You need to hit a terrorist mountainside compound without the host country knowing that you're there. So you need a ride that's quiet, carries a low thermal signature. GM has just a truck they want to put you in. And actually what it is, is it's a Chevy Colorado. And it's made out of the... Polyfiber, you know, fiber optic stuff. Oh yeah, it probably comes with you know optional machine gun platform. But but I mean the point is is it's it's a, a truck that's powered by a f hydrogen fuel cell. And so the a, so engine doesn't produce a lot of emissions. No, noise, no heat, and here's here's a plus, especially for using the desert. The the uh, you, you don't have to actually, worry about the dust and all. But it also produces water. 
Because that's one of the byproducts of using a hydrogen fuel cell to produce several gallons of water every day. So you'll be able to trace it by looking for the water. That's right. Follow, follow, follow the, the drip. Follow the drip. <laughs> uh, but, tweak that one. Yeah. But, but like I said, you know, the, again, let's figure out a new market. You know, we, how are we going to sell these big ass trucks? Well, we're going to sell them to the army. Yeah. All right, they'll buy. Right? Well, General Motors used to make the tanks and all that kind yeah. of stuff. As a matter of fact, I still think they make the tanks. Yeah, I'm sure the they army. do. Here's another one I kind of liked. It says Ford invents a new uh, car camouflage, and they're not doing. The funny thing is, it, what it is is it's a camouflage that makes uh, cameras kind of wig out. Yeah. And, and I was thinking, oh great, you know, because they got the uh, the cameras on the stoplights. You know, if you can make your car invisible, let's see them give a ticket to that car, right? right. I can just feel what, but that's not what they're doing. It they're actually doing it because they're afraid of people seeing some of these test cars that they've got out. They don't want people putting pictures of these cars up before they're ready to release them, so, but you know they'll try them out on the road. So these cars reflect weirdly. Yes, I mean when you actually look at yeah, it, the like picture is really pixelated. You can barely see it at all. Looks like I got eyeballs in it. And yeah, stuff even. and you it's can't really even see who's driving the car. Right. So like I said, you know that would really. Def I, mean, I think they missed their mark. They should be selling this thing as a consumer right. item because there isn't anybody right. who wouldn't buy that. Because you always get hit by those stupid red light cameras. Yeah. This would defeat the red light cameras. Listen to me, you're marketing to the wrong place. Because <laughs> everybody out there would buy this stuff, you know. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the cities are making huge fortunes off these red light cameras. Yeah, and, and they do nothing but irk the consumers. They're always like, well, we're doing it for safety. Right, yeah, 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 the safety actually increased the of number course, of accidents. Of course, you see yellow thinking. light, you just jump on the damn brakes, and the three right. guys behind you plow into right. you. Right, it increased the accident rate by 30% or some ridiculous amount. But it increased their revenue by like, exactly. like a million dollars or it's something. More than that. Yeah. I mean, it's millions, millions yeah. and millions That's per, per city. Oh, no, I'm city. talking millions, of, like tens of millions of dollars per city, easy. Yeah. And here's the one I like my best. That was a Toyota. They they actually came out with something. Oh, the baby robot. The baby robot. Yeah, it says Toyota thinks it has. It's like Honda. Honda's making robots. You know. Yeah, well, of course they have to compete with. But Honda's is about you know yay tall, yeah, yeah. about three feet tall. This thing is like four inches tall. It says Toyota thinks it has an answer for people who need a friend, a baby robot. The Japanese automaker today introduced a four-inch tall robot called Kurobo Mini. It'll go on sale in Japan later this year. The tiny robot talks in a high-pitched voice, blinks its eyes, and wobbles like a baby, and it'll cost around four hundred dollars. I want to know: Can it run like the Honda robot? Because that yeah, yeah, Honda no, robot can like four hundred bucks. Jump but the thing about the Honda robot, it, it's not for sale, which is really weird. I mean, they built this thing that literally, I mean, it runs. It's right actually around a, a part-time superhero in Japan, and nobody knows it. Yeah. Well, actually, they, they've actually used it in several stores in Japan. Yeah. As a greeter, but I mean, it, it can really it can climb stairs. I mean, it's amazing how it can. I mean, you see these things where they were doing the robot competition. Right. This would beat them all because they're all slow as hell. But they, ne I've never seen it in any of the competitions. No, I haven't either. Which is weird. But now again, the DARPA stuff is U.S. manufacturers usually, so it's not going to be in that. But still, I'm, they they have worldwide, hell, they have Japanese competitions yeah. for robots. But but what's killing me? This thing is a real little tiny, four inches tall. It's four hundred bucks. It's at hundred dollars an inch. <laughs> But it's only available in Japan. You know, they love all these things. Yeah, but you Japan. can, you know, we live in a world economy. You can buy anything. I'm sure if you look but at it. But right eBay, now, that's only where they're selling them in Japan. You know, you know, it's really weird. If you order stuff from China, right. the shipping is dirt cheap right. and the price is dirt cheap. But if you order something from Japan, the shipping is pretty expensive. Right. Which is sort of weird because it's like right there. Right. And the prices are pretty stiff. Yeah. I mean, my brother buys, he's sent the Japanese antiques and stuff like that. So he buys these little. Kachina jaw type things. Right, yeah. they're, not, they're not called Kachina right. jaws. I know what you're talking about. That's an Indian yeah. thing. But the shipping on the damn things called more than the damn dolls. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. And again, I mean, I've bought stuff from both places, and usually the, the, the costs are much, much higher. So anyway, I know we're at the end of the show. I want to remind up our clients, the, if you're listening to the show, go to the blog, click on the notes page. Mm -hmm. There, there's going to be a link to a whole bunch of articles. Of course, you can find a link to the really good articles right in the blog itself. For our Club WQ members, go to the Dropbox. You'll have it all there. You'll have actually the printouts of the articles on there. We want to thank our sponsor. Yeah, we want to thank Vibrant Life Health Center. Great place. If you want to lose 20 to 40 pounds, they have a program that's that has a 20 to 40 pound guarantee. And on top of that, if you got aches and pains, I can tell you, man, these guys really are really, really good. I mean, they come, they know lots and lots of different kinds of techniques. They're not a a one-trick pony right. chiropractic In fact, center. right now they're offering a free uh, scan. A, scan. A, a Titron scan, mm -hmm. which would normally run you about 100 bucks, so that's worth going there and checking out. 
Um, next week's show is going to be touch marketing in the 21st century. Okay. So we're going to teach you how to touch people. Okay. We're, we're, not, we're, not, those, we're not going to jail. We're going to those little robots to do it for you, right? <laughs> so keep working the web doing, gang. See you next week. Until next time. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. Goodbye.